morning we want to share a little bit about the influence of a father. And even though we're sharing on the influence of a father, I believe that it can be applied to each one of our lives as we serve him and as we follow him to accomplish what he desires within us. And so we're going to start off this morning with the foundation so you'll understand where I believe the Lord has taken us today. In the dictionary, this word influence is the capacity or the power of persons or things to become a compelling force to produce effects on actions, behavior, opinions of others. Another word for this is to imprint, to guide, or to direct. Influences are all around us. Everywhere we go, everywhere we uh, are at, there's influences. Take, for instance, driving down the road. If you're driving down the road and you pass one of those old-fashioned barbecue places that still smoke their meats and so forth? What's the first thing that happens? Instantly, you're hungry. It doesn't matter if you ate an hour ago. Instantly, your stomach says, you got to stop. Why? Because it's influenced your stomach And they've got you. And the next thing you know, you're sitting down at the table. Don't know how this happened. It's influence. We have influences in our lives, and it's important for us to recognize them. It's important that we pay attention to the influences that are in our lives because they're everywhere. It's important for us to understand what it is that's influencing. And now I want you to take a moment and reflect in your life who's been an influence? What have they influenced you in? And how can you take that and use it? in your life. Men, we have a mission if you're willing to accept it. We can influence the lives of many people. And through prayer, we can influence generations. Being a father, being a man, the Lord gives us that that platform in which we can help guide and strengthen and shape and and do all kinds of different other things. But, But the most important thing in our life is influence. Influence in a godly behavior, influence in the godly morals, in the godly values, in all these things so that those in whom we are influencing, again, the actions, the, the, the part, the behaviors, the opinions of others, it will then be magnified in and through their lives. This morning we've got a few examples. First, we're going to go to 2 Kings the second chapter, verses 7 through 14. Fifty men of the company of the prophets went and stood at a distance, facing the place where Elijah and Elisha had stopped at the Jordan. Elijah took his cloak, rolled it up, and struck the water with it. The water divided to the right hand and to the left, And the two of them crossed over onto dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me, 
what I can do for you before I am taken from you. Let me inherit the double portion of your spirit, Elisha replied. You've asked a difficult thing, Elijah said. Yet if you see me when I am taken from you, it will be yours, otherwise not. And as they were walking along and talking together, suddenly a chariot of fire and horses of fire appeared and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. And Elisha saw this and cried out, My father, my father, the chariots and the horsemen of Israel. And Elijah saw him no, Elisha saw him no more. Then he took hold of his own clothes and tore them apart. He picked up the cloak that had fallen from Elijah and went back and stood at the bank of the Jordan. And when he had took the cloak that had fallen from him, struck the water with it and said, where now is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he struck the water, it divided to the right hand, to the left, and he crossed. powerful illustration of godly influence from one life transferred to another life. How important that is in this story to come to the place of understanding the the impact was Elijah Elisha's father? No. But in that moment where, where everything was changed, I mean, I can't imagine standing there, and then all of a sudden a chariot come down of fire and swoop up your brother that you were just talking with. I can't imagine. I can imagine it was a little bit scary and whatnot. But the first thing that came out of Elisha's heart, because out of our heart, our mouth speaks. My father, my father. A testimony to the influence that Elijah had upon this servant, Elisha. Elijah, in his influence, did not share step by step with Elisha how to be a prophet. I think sometimes we can overcomplicate things and we say, okay, there's 12 steps of this and that. You got to do this, you got to do this, you got to do this, and then you will become. He didn't sit there and say, lay out a 12-week course on how to be a prophet. He sat there and said, I'm going to pour into you what it is to follow the Lord. What it is to be guided by by the Lord in such a way that there are miracles flowing from your life. This was his point in in influencing Elisha's life. And it was so powerful, Elisha saw so intricately uh, Elijah's passion for serving God that he said, I want a double portion of what you've got. Because what you have, I want to have more. Not that he was selfish. Not that he was sitting there saying, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to be powerful. I'm going to be this. He was sitting there saying, it means so much to you. I want it. I want it. Do people say that about our lives? Do they see Jesus? So much working in us that they say, I want a double portion. I want a double portion of what you've got. A double portion of procrastination or a double portion of a messy garage or a double portion of dirty dishes. No. Not that. It's about the important realities of following the Lord.
What are we doing? What are we saying that's going to change somebody's whole actions, their opinions, their thing? What, what are we doing in our spiritual lives in pouring out as an influence to those that, that the Lord brings to our lives? To the point of Elisha where he says, I don't know the struggles that are going to come. I don't know the heartaches, and I don't know the, 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 the challenges that are ahead. I don't know any of those things. But none of those things matter. What I want is what you have more abundantly. I want to take what you have and then allow the Lord to take it to that next level. This is the heart of an influencer for the Lord. Because I don't know you fathers, but if there's one thing that I wanted for my kids is to be better to be stronger in the Lord, to understand, to hear his voice in a clarity that I don't have to worry about uh, anything, that they're going to take what, what little that I have and they're going to sit there and say, but I want more and I'm going to strive for more. I'm going to push for more. I'm going to want to pray more. I'm going to want to get into God's word more. See, this is the influence that Elisha, Elijah had on Elisha's life. Six years they were together. That's not a long period of time. I know for, for young people, it, it seems like an eternity. But the older you get, the quicker it flies. So he poured in six years. Wow. Mel Lawrence wrote this quote, and I love it. Leaders don't motivate people by their knowledge of the future, but by their anticipation of what is possible. I'll read that again because it's really important. Leaders don't motivate people by their knowledge of the future, but by their anticipation of what is possible. I'm so thankful that when my son was born, my firstborn, the Lord did not lay out all the struggles and all the challenges and all the things that were going to be brought forth in his life because that would have overwhelmed me. I would have sat there and said, oh, it's impossible. I how in the world is this little guy ever going to make it with all these things? But the Lord is so graceful and so favorable that he says day by day by day, you take this and you influence and you, you share the word of God. You share the joys of serving. You get this and so forth. And you model this before your children and you pour into their lives. And then one day, One day you're going to see their little one praying on their own, seeking God, raising their hands, or whatever it is that God has. And that's the way with our life. If we sit there and say, I want to be there at that point of the, in the mountain. We can't worry about that mountaintop and the struggles of getting there it's a day-by-day -day thing, sitting there saying, I don't know what's going to happen. But I know the Lord is faithful in this moment. I know he's been faithful, and I know he will be faithful. Come into that place where we're encouraged and we're strengthened in, that, in order to be that influence.
I truly believe, as, as the Lord laid this upon my heart, it strengthened and it, 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 it grew my heart in the place of, of recognizing how much of an influence this world has. Moment by moment by moment. It has that place where we can sit there and say, whew, I don't know how I could take another step. Step by step by step, the Lord gives us that grace to, to move forward and to come to that place of anticipating what is possible. Not what we see or what we think we see, but come into the place where he says, I trust you, Lord. I trust you to take what, what little that I can understand and you can magnify it. Another great example is Abraham. On Tuesday night, Russ had shared about Abraham and his, his, his sacrifice before worship. And I want to stay with that thought so that you can understand the importance of the influences that God places in our lives. Coming to that place where we understand the truth of, of the power of who he is. First of all, who did Abraham influence? Well, if we read in Genesis, we can find a lot of different people that, that Abraham influenced. But today, Abraham has influenced the Western world and its culture. Because Judaism, Christianity, and Islam all recognize Abraham as the father of many nations. That's quite a bit of group of people. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't know what the statistics are, but you date just those three in the world's population. That's a pretty good chunk of people. Abraham direct influence Romans 4:18 in hope against hope Abraham believed that he would become the father of many nations as he had been promised by God so numberless shall your descendants be Again, Abraham didn't know the future, but he listened. He listened. I think it's safe to say we can learn a lot and we can teach a lot because of his example. And God... got Moses' attention in Exodus 3 and 8. And then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Then Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. We can look at Abraham's life and we can say, oh, he did this and he did this and he did this and he did this. And he did, but the first thing that I think we, we can miss out on is Abraham listened. He listened. He was with his family, living in Ur. God spoke to him. And he listened. Fathers, if there's one thing that we must do is listen. Listen. We must listen, we must listen, we must listen. 
I don't know how many times I talked with people and there's challenges that come up. And it's like, well, did you listen? No, because they didn't say, da, 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 you know, and irregardless of whether we like to hear what people are saying, God needs to, to, to work in their lives. God needs to work in our lives. And so first and foremost, we need to listen. We need to listen to see where this other person's heart is. If I don't ever listen to my children, how am I ever going to know their heart? How do I know where they're, they're at spiritually if they don't share? And if I don't hear? Come into that place that we listen so that we can hear, so then we can allow the Lord to speak to our heart. How can I best minister to my child that's going through this? Why? Because I listened and he or she spilled their heart out of where they're at. And then you can guide. You can be that influence that God placed you right in the midst of that to be and to do. So Abraham listened to God. His first act of obedience was to walk towards the promised land. Did he know where he's going? No. But he listened. This is the way, walk in it. Turn not to the right hand nor to the left. This is the way. And walk in it. And again, because he listened, there was a promised land. If he didn't listen, would there have been a promised land? No. No. Because God had his instrument. Fathers, men, mothers, women. We all have this place where, where we can listen. And again, in Abraham's life, Genesis, the 22nd chapter. Sometime later, God tested Abraham. And he said to him, Abraham... Here am I, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains I will tell you about. Early the next morning, Abraham got up, saddled his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. And we didn't cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the, the distance. And he said to his servant, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac. And he himself carried the fire and the knife. And as the two of them went together, Isaac spake, spoke up and said to his father, Abraham, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied. The fire and the wood are here, Isaac said, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. Wow. What a powerful story. Again, says my father. He addressed him. Faith and action. Two powerful points of our influence that we can have. 
our faith, knowing with God all things are possible, knowing that as we walk out our life in Christ, he will never leave us nor forsake us. He'll never turn his back. He'll never sit there and say, oh, that's just not this. He sits there and says, it's okay. It is all right. I'm here with you. Abraham did not have all the answers. I'm thankful that Abraham didn't have all the answers. Because that gave me the opportunity over and over and over to tell my children, I don't have the answer. But that which I know, God is faithful. That God will show if I will be in tune enough to listen, if you'll be in tune, I will get the answer one way or another. Somehow, some way, God will reveal it to us. But that's the thing is, we think, oh, if I'm going to influence somebody's life, i got to have all the answers. No, we have to have that relationship with the Heavenly Father to sit there and say, I have no clue, but He does. And I'm thankful that he does because then I can rely on him and then that faith can be strengthened. He didn't have the answers. And the powerful thing is it didn't stop him. He continued to walk that place of influence out into his son's life. How powerful it is when we can think of, of, of a young life being molded into the ways of the Lord. I, don't, I, I would like to know how many times this story got played out in Isaac's life, thinking, this was my father. We could look at the negative and say, oh, he was going to sacrifice him. No, he was being obedient. God brought him to that place where he sat there and said, obedience is better than sacrifice. Our willing heart is better than the fat of rams. Coming to the place that 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 influence means something. Men. God will allow things to come in your life so that you can pour into your families an example, an influence, a place where no doubt you didn't have all the answers, but you still walked in that faith. You still walked in that place. Whether or not it makes sense or not. Yeah, I think this is one of those, those tricky places where the world has influenced us as Christians to sit there and say, if it doesn't make sense, it's, it's not real. There's a lot of things in my life that didn't make a whole lot of sense. The reality is we don't have to have the answers in order to be an influence of faith and belief and sitting there saying, I walk by, uh, not by sight, but by what God gives me. That strength and that courage to walk forward. The question comes is, will we listen and act upon what God is leading us to do? That was the bottom line. God gave this test. He gave this place to Abraham and said, what are you going to do with it? 
I think there's many times in my life I can look back and say I missed the boat because I didn't get the two consiled together going forward in the right direction. <clears throat> Another quote by Mel Lawrence, it is the plotters who make things happen. We plot along, we plot along, we plot along. We just keep going forward, growing in, in, in God's word and seeking him. God will bring it about. God will bring it about. It will be good. It will be what God wants if we'll just continue to press in, continue to move forward. There was a jewelry store owner who had been preparing to go on vacation and left tasks for her staff to perform. She had a line of jewelry that hadn't been selling well, and she wanted the price cut in half. But in her haste, she left a note that was unclear. When she returned from vacation, she was delighted to find that every piece of the jewelry was gone. She was, however, shocked to find that the staff had doubled the price of the jewelry, and the pieces that hadn't been selling went out the door immediately once the price was raised because it changed the way that people thought about them. Our thoughts determine our actions. And if you could get anything out of this message, this would be the desire. It's time we understand the value of our influence. We have to understand the value. The store owner didn't understand the value, but somebody did. And they bought all the jewelry. What do we believe our influence is going to do? It doesn't matter who we are. It doesn't matter what we know. It matters. Do I believe in the value of Christ, in the value of his word, the value of prayer, all these different integral parts of following Christ? Do I believe that is something worth passing on? Is that something that is valued? I believe it's time to stand upon God's word. Stand and make a difference that God has given to us. Calling it a privilege to influence lives for Christ. It's a privilege to follow Christ. It is a privilege to sit there and say, I will take that weight. I will take that, that challenge. I will take that, and I will allow God to do what he wants to do in me through it. Pat said it best Tuesday night when he said, we need to be a watchman on the wall. Setting the example, leading our families, leading our children, leading our church back to that living influence in this world in which we live. We could go on and on and on for days on how the world is influencing our lives and, and trying to uh, change our actions and our opinions on this and this and this. Let's do the flip side. What if the church of Jesus Christ as a whole, I'm not talking just MCC, but the whole, would stand up and say, what? I have, I value. It's valuable. The precious blood of Jesus. It's valuable. It's useful and it's good.
Again, I want to read the definition of influence. The capacity or the power of persons or things to be, compelling, to be a compelling force to produce effects upon the actions, the behavior, and the opinions of others. We're being influenced all around. Our children are being influenced. Our young people are influenced. Everyone is being influenced. And what does it produce? The definition says that influence produces. So, what are influences producing? Are they producing godliness? Edification in his word? An atmosphere of worship? Powerful prayer? What's it producing? See, this is the recognition. This is the things that we need to be seeing is what does it produce? What influence is it changing my actions in my life? That guy that cuts you off on the, in the road, what action did that produce? What influence did that have on you? What do we want the outcome to be? What fruit do we want? Or better yet, what fruit does God want? from the influences in our lives. Fathers, you must realize how powerful your influence is and that that can change a nation. Just the two examples, Elijah, Elisha, and Abraham, those two stories. changed who we are. Fathers, you can change the atmosphere of your home. You can. You can change the atmosphere of your work. After pastoring for so many years, I came to a realization that not everybody understood. But every single person that walks through that door can change the atmosphere of the church by their willingness, their hunger. There are all these things. If I'm, if I'm hungry, if I'm going, if I'm pressing forward, that influences others. And it all comes down to desire. Do you desire to be what God wants you to be? And I would take the next step further and say, what God needs you to be. He wants, but he also, he needs us to be an influence in this world. What's he calling me to be? We all need to be that influence in lives for the Lord, His Holy Spirit to use us. Worship team, you can come. Maybe you're here and you say, wow. I need to start. I need to start this, this journey with the Lord. To 
today is your day. You can be that influence of change that Christ has for your life. Maybe you're here today and you say, wow, it's too late for me to influence my kids because they're already grown. It's not too late. It's time to ask God, what can I do in this moment, in this time, to influence them in the, the, the ways that you would desire? Listen. Allow him to speak to your heart and then act upon them. Maybe you're here today and say, wow, this, this hits home. And I truly can see where I need to, to grow in this where I need to be that, that encouragement, that influence, and that guide. But I need to make that step to be more. I desire to be more. Today's your day. Maybe you're here and blessed and said, I'm doing all those things. I'm, I'm making the mark. Then I would encourage you to take that step and influence someone else's life, guide them, direct them, encourage them, help them all along the way. Wherever you are today, in this process of being that influencer for Christ, wherever you're at, It's going to take prayer, encouragement, strength, availability for the Lord. Wherever you're at this morning, the Lord's speaking to your heart. The prayer team's going to be out and around. up here find somebody to pray with you so that you can be strengthened and empowered to be that influence for God and to your children and into the generations